Hi everybody, welcome to week three of English 1020 online. I'm so glad you're here and we have a lot to talk about today. So I'm just gonna dive right in. Um, today I wanna do a few things in this video. Number one, I wanna go through our weekly schedule and talk about a few changes and tweaks that have been coming up. I wanna shout out a thank you. We'll get to that in a second. And I wanna go through some principles of analysis and of rhetorical analysis specifically. So let me start by saying that as we go through the schedule, I'm just trying to give an overview of everything that is gonna be due this week. And when I do that, if you have any questions about anything that I mention or point out, or even if you need to pause this video and go find the thing on your own computer and then start it up again, that's totally fine. Um, if you need to rewatch the video, that's fine too. Or if there's something that I am not explaining clearly enough, please do feel free to shoot me an email and let me know. Um, there's going to be a couple of changes for this week, and I'll talk to you about that in a second. But mainly overall, my shout out thank you is to all of you for your patience. Thank you so much for, number one, giving me good feedback when there have been things on Canvas that aren't working or like we can't upload our photos to the chat, Nicole. I appreciate that feedback. And thank you for your patience as we work out the kinks. This is my second semester using Canvas, but it's still not a perfect system. And I really appreciate you guys hanging with me as we work it out. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn this over to the split view so that we can talk through the schedule and talk some analysis. Okay, so here we are in our home screen for Canvas. And I'm going to scroll down. We're still working on project one, your rhetorical analysis essay. And we've completed week one, week two. Here we are at week three. So once again, I'm going to take us to the week three overview. And as this opens up, you'll be able to see the list view of our weekly assignments and the schedule view. This week, one of the main things we're gonna get into is Aristotelian rhetorical appeals, which you may know as ethos, pathos, and logos, um, but we're gonna use those as we work through our shitty first drafts of project one. More on that in a moment. But for this week, I'd like you to watch the week three instructor video which you're already doing, good job. There's a brief mini lesson on those Aristotelian rhetorical appeals, so check that out. And our little vid this week is just kind of a thought-provoking TED Talk that I think would be interesting for you guys to check out. You can also do a little practice rhetorical analysis on it, see if you buy her argument and what she could have done to maybe make it more or less persuasive. So those are the things to watch this week. Here are the things to read. Uh, you're gonna read this piece, Backpacks versus Briefcases, and it's a pretty engaging piece and it's gonna give you a lot of really good tips and strategies for how to go about rhetorical analysis specifically. Um, you'll also need to give a second read or maybe we're on our third read through of your article that you've chosen for the project one analysis. Again, the document with all of those links, the original posting of it is under week one. I know I tried to link to it in the DJ two for last week and the, that link was not working. <laughs> I don't know why I apologize for that, but there is a, a linked doc under week one. Um, or you could just email me, as many of you have. Also, the other thing that I'd like you to read for this week is a student sample of Project One. This is a pretty strong student sample. It's not perfect, but it's something that you can read and think about as we get into the differences between the process of analysis and writing an analysis. 
So speaking of writing, the things to write for this week are DJ number three, and that is one of the changes. Um, when we kick back out to the main menu, I'm going to talk to you guys about how I've updated that prompt, which was hopelessly erroneous. It was wrong. <laughs> I apologize for that, but it is updated now, and um, we'll talk about DJs in general in a second. But also, project builder number three. Can you believe you've done three project builders? Uh, this general to particular assignment will give you guys some practice building paragraphs in an academic genre, which will really help when you're putting together your final project one draft. And speaking of, not your final, but your first draft of project one is due. You wanna be writing it and getting it ready for a Skype conference with me or an in-person conference with me. Um, these conferences are optional, so I'm not gonna force you to do it, but I really encourage you to make use of conferences with me as a resource because I can really help troubleshoot and give you a sense of if you're on the right track or not. Okay, so here's the calendar view. By Wednesday, so by tomorrow, you want to shoot for reading or watching this video, reading Backpacks versus Briefcases, and going through that digital journal to respond to readings. Now, here's the trick, is that when I assign this DJ, I do ask for you guys to be responding to all of the readings for the week. Um, the one main reading for the week is Backpacks versus Briefcases, but I'm also asking you to read your chosen article a third time. There it is, round three. And read the student sample. So I understand that that's kind of tricky if you're going to go by this schedule. How can I respond to all the readings on Wednesday if I haven't read them at all until Sunday? Good question. Maybe a time turner? Maybe a hole in the space-time continuum? I don't know. <laughs> it was kind of an illogical way for me to set things up, and I apologize. So if you want to wait to write your digital journal till Sunday, that's fine. If you want to go ahead and read everything on Wednesday so that you can respond to it in your digital journal, that's also fine. Um, whatever works for you as you're figuring out how to go through the schedule. Now, again, suggested schedule, right? Everything is due a hard deadline on Sunday. Um, but if by Friday you've watched the rhetorical appeals mini lesson, read your article another time, and started to work on your project builder number three, you'll be in good shape. Because then by Sunday, I ask that you have watched all of the videos. If you haven't started watching these weekly instructor videos, perfect time. Better late than never. Better now than late. So get on your vid watching. Make sure that you're reading all your stuff and look at that student sample. And though I haven't asked you to submit it, I don't think. We'll check that on the home screen. Please do start your shitty first draft of Project One no later than Sunday. Okay. Let's look back at the home screen just to check my own work here and to look at the digital journal prompt. Okay. Anytime, Canvas. There we go. Oh, good. I did put this up here. All right. So here are the three writing assignments. Number one, DJ number three, which is updated. We'll look at that in a second. Number two, Project Builder 3, Building Paragraphs. And the last thing, which is due on Sunday, is a draft of Project 1. So it's just a really simple place to upload your shitty first draft. And we're going to take Anne Lamott's model for shitty first draft. So you just bleh, barf it all up, get it all down as close to complete as you can. And then we will revise it. So if it is shitty, good. That's what it's supposed to be. Just get it down. Get it written. And then revision will be so much easier. 
Just submit the assignment here. It can be a text entry box or a file upload. It's up to you. Now, working backwards from the shitty first draft, this general to particular assignment gives you some practice for how to build paragraphs. So this is meant to be kind of fun, but it's also meant to help you write paragraphs structured in a way that's going to fit into your academic essays. So try to take this as practice, but useful practice. And then here's our updated digital journal number three. So once again, I, I kind of tried to clarify this first prompt. When I'm asking about a question, problem, or conversation at the core of the readings, what I mean is the readings that we tackled this week, all of them. So this week, it's backpacks versus briefcases, your own article that you're analyzing for Project One, and the student sample of Project One. So these are not all of the same genre, right? Right, yeah, these are not the same genre. You've got an academic article, you've got your more editorial opinion piece article that you're analyzing, and you've got a piece of literal educational writing, right? A student sample. These aren't all about the same topics, so they're not even all arguing for the same things, but there are touch points. There's ways that these pieces overlap and inform each other. So give it your best shot. It's a complicated question to say, how do all these different genres overlap or talk to each other? Um, but it's something I think you guys can take on. So give it your best shot and we'll see what conversations develop from that. And then, the rest of the journal prompt hopefully should be self-explanatory, but trying to get at why, why, or how, or do you even think that your article that you've chosen for Project One, is it persuasive? Is it successful? Yes? No? What do you think? Why or why not? And then to reflect on your writing so far for this class, we haven't really done any drafting for the major project yet, but this is a writing class. How's the writing going? So those are some things for you to think about and respond to in this digital journal. And if you have questions, again, just let me know. Okay, last thing before I let you guys go. I want to talk to you guys about the process of analysis versus writing an analysis. So this is something that we talked a little bit about in our little vid from last week, right? There's the process of summarizing something and then there's writing the genre of summary. Well, when you guys look at this article, Backpacks versus Briefcases by Laura Bullen Carroll, this article is about the process of analysis, okay? And specifically rhetorical analysis. So there's some pretty engaging examples that she puts forth here at the beginning. And I wanna just really push you guys because a lot of students, after they read this, they say to me, oh, it was so redundant. She just kept saying the same thing over and over again. Yes, but she's saying the same thing, how to do a rhetorical analysis, in two main ways, okay? So the first way that she offers up is to use a concept of the rhetorical situation that's put forth by a scholar named Lloyd Bitzer. And Bitzer basically says you can think about the uh, exigence, which is the, the reason for this argument. You can think about the constraints. And you can think about the audience. So exigence, audience, and constraints. Constraints would be 
things that limit the argument, limit the writer in what they're trying to do. Um, so if I say I'm going to write a piece arguing for how smart my English 1020 students are, my audience might be state legislators who are trying to decide whether or not to grant my university more funding. Maybe my exigence is that I want to make sure that I can get the best technology and the best financial aid for my students. My constraints might be that I need to write in the genre of, say, a white paper or a political brief that my audience would understand and be easily able to read. Does that make sense? So that's the Lloyd Bitzer rhetorical situation. That is a process of analysis. You're analyzing the rhetoric or the means of persuasion in a piece of writing. So if someone was reading my white paper about how smart my English 1020 students are, they might ask themselves, who is her audience? What was her exigence for writing this? And why is it this genre? What were the constraints upon her when she was writing? Another process for rhetorical analysis is something that Carol calls the rhetorical triangle. And I'm trying to find it real quick. So she's giving an example here of how the Bitzer analysis goes. But then she also talks about the rhetorical triangle. This should ring some bells. Ding, ding, ding! Because we did a mini lesson on this, right? The rhetorical triangle is a, is a way to symbolize or show the rhetorical situation. Different from Bitzer. Okay, so this is the second way you can go about rhetorical analysis. And this includes what we're what we've been talking about in terms of thinking about the purpose, thinking about the audience, and thinking about the author. But when you're thinking about the rhetorical situation as a triangle, that's just the first step. The triangle or the Lloyd Bitzer rhetorical situation, that's going to be one paragraph in your project one essay. The next step is breaking apart the argument itself. So the rhetorical situation tells us why this writer might be writing in a particular way. Delving into how they formed their argument, that's where we get into the Aristotelian rhetorical appeals. Or, as Aristotle calls them, the artistic appeals. So once again, as we're going through this piece, what you're getting or what you should be getting from Carol is a lot of different ways to pick apart that article. So whether you're reading the article about Facebook and fake friends or the article about uh, why women still can't have it all or Toni Morrison's the, Pe the Work We Do, The People We Are, you're trying to pick it apart to see, first of all, why was this author writing to this audience with these constraints presenting themselves in a particular way? Then you're going to get really into that argument that the author's making and say, how? How are they making it? Are they using a lot of pathos? Are they appealing to my logic? So use Carol to help you think through this process of analysis. Now, that's the process of analysis. The actual structure of writing in the genre of analysis asks for some key things. So I'm opening up here our assignment for the rhetorical analysis essay. And first of all, you're definitely going to want to set up this analysis essay with an introduction, a summary of the article, and a description of the rhetorical situation. Maybe even add in some of that bits or stuff about constraints and exigence. Then the meat 
these two main things here are the meat of your article, describing the rhetorical analysis, <laughs> describing the rhetorical situation, and then doing the analysis. How is this writer making this argument? And then towards the end, you want to come to some conclusion. Obviously, you're going to preview this conclusion in your intro in like a thesis statement, right? 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 Wink, wink. But you bring it home with this conclusion paragraph where you are claiming that this argument that the author is making in the article you've chosen is successful, persuasive, they're doing the job, it's working, or, hmm, no, it's not really persuasive, I don't agree, it's not successful, or, yes and no. I'm persuaded in this way and I'm not persuaded in this way. That's your claim that you're making in the Project One essay. So if you want a little more guidance as you're putting together your shitty first draft, there's a lot of step-by-step -step here. Now, not every assignment we do in this class, in fact, none of the other ones are going to be so structured as this, but this hopefully kind of walks you through paragraph by paragraph. Not every single word, obviously, but in general, what you want to be shooting for as you move through this essay. So if you like structure and you love frameworks and you like being told like paragraph by paragraph, this is going to be great for you. If you hate this and feel super constrained, I apologize, it won't always be this way. But take a look here at the assignment because you can look at the requirements for the introduction, the summary paragraph, your claim and conclusion, and then in between there, what you want to put in your analysis. So you want to identify the author's use of ethos. You want to identify the author's use of pathos. Identify the author's use of logic in the article you've chosen. And then you can use the description of the rhetorical situation, the author's use of ethos, pathos, and logos to support your claim that this is a successful, persuasive piece of rhetoric or not really successful or something in the middle. Okay? So let me bring this back um, and we'll dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Lost my train of thought there. All right, so just want to close this out by saying once again, thank you guys for your patience with all the stuff going on with Canvas. And um, let me know if you guys have any questions about this Project One draft. Your shitty first draft is due along with your Project Builder 3 and Digital Journal 3, all due by midnight on Sunday. Shoot me an email or uh, stop by my office. You can also uh, hit up Rayanne on the GroupMe. I believe she's holding office hours this week and continuing on through the rest of the semester. So you can stop by the Writing Center and uh, chat with Rayanne also. So yeah, have a great rest of your week. Enjoy the sunshine today, and I will talk to you soon. Have a great week.